I'm gonna have to do something about this, aren't I? You're really lucky all you guys are too cute for me to go Liberty Prime on your ass. Hello everyone, welcome back to Regrowth. So, you see that we have moved things around a little bit in the Thomcraft area. I have here a small alchemical boiler setup. This thing will melt down liquids into their Essentia. Uh, the main use I wanted for is melting down milk, which Automagia allows you to put into a tank as a liquid. It's a very easy way to get Sano, the healing element. The easiest way to get it other than that is either to melt down entire buckets of milk and dealing with all the metallum, or making potions of healing in mass. But with Automagy, you can just get a big tank of milk and melt it all down. Anyway, yes, that, necessi that necessitated moving our new alchemical construct alchemy system, and this actually put the mirror far enough away that the lines of gloop don't split up when I do infusions, which is a mixed blessing. Uh, you may notice a certain person missing from my hot bar and replaced for someone new. I noticed that when fully enchanted, these bound swords did more damage, but don't worry, I haven't abandoned our old friend Slashy McStaberton. He's just sitting here where we can go and visit him once in a while. Finally, I figured out a problem, or I figured out a solution to our problem with the flesh golems, and that was to not use flesh golems at all. Oh yes, and we have an abstruse platform sitting here. It's a little uh, simple Batania thing. It can be disguised as any block. You go through it from any direction except for the top, and you go through the top when you are sneaking. So paired up with our arcane levitator here, it's just a nice little hole cover. Anyway, down here you may notice that we have a, um, a danger room cordoned off. Inside of there, I have a small coven of witches. Yeah. Between the Ritual of Regeneration and the Witch's own uh, proclivity, proclivity towards drinking regeneration potions, these guys last for quite a while. They still do occasionally die, but... Well, well, the way I got Witches in there is with something called a Wrath Cage. It is... I believe I've talked about it before. It is a relatively... I think it's actually one of the more difficult infusions in the game. In the pack. It was an instability 10 infusion. It required a full block of Thaumium, these Wrath Shards that you can only get for killing enemies in the Nether. It required tons of Essentia. Anyway, that allows you to spend Essentia in order to spawn monsters. And the Essentia that you need to spawn witches is Precantasio. So I have here a hopper full of chiseled sandstone, which is each worth, uh, which is each worth one piece of Precantasio. And I'm just voiding excess of everything else. So essentially I have an Alembic plus a purple tube plus the Essentia pipes uh, plus the internal buffer of the Wrath Cage itself full of Precantatio. And I let it get to that point. I filled it up with chiseled sandstone and then I went and I did Thomcraft research for like three or four hours. And this is how much chiseled sandstone it went through because it only needs to get to pump more Precantatio into the system when a witch dies. So this will last quite a long while, and if for whatever reason it starts going through it faster, I can just hook it up to the ME system. I just didn't feel like, you know, running over the cables. So we now have a fully working and operational Well of Suffering. And here you can see I'm cooking up some top-tier slates, and... I am gaining, even though the blood is bottoming out, I am still gaining blood fast enough that it does not have time for the progress to degrade very much. So this is actually going through with the craft, even though it is all gone with. And yes, you can see I, I put back all my runes of sacrifice and kind of arranged my altar a little bit. So yes... We can make pretty much anything. We just need to leave it in the blood altar and let the witches feed it. So, now that we have a stable source of blood, 
I thought I would start off today with a little bit of advanced blood magic, because I think this Terra Steel armor is starting to get a little bit itchy, you know? I mean, we don't have a laundry in this world. So I would like to make my forever armor. A nice little set of bound demonic armor. And to make bound armor as strong as possible, I'm going to need demon blood shards. And of course, to get demon blood shards, blood shards I am going to need to summon a demon. And for that, I'm going to need the arcane plinth and these arcane pedestals, which are just made out of a bunch of weak blood shards and obsidian and iron and stuff. And I'm going to have to arrange them, and I'm going to have to do a ceremony with them. Uh, for the thing that we're going to need to summon, it's a really simple setup. I was thinking of the higher tier summonings that require a really huge ritual. And frankly, I don't think I'm really going to be doing those. Or if I do, I'm only going to do it like once just for a certain other thing. Anyway, um, I also made too many plinths. I made, or I made too many pedestals. So let me show off something else that I have. I have in my hand a magic hand mirror that you might be able to ascertain the purpose of from its name. This thing will transport items to a mirror it has been linked to. And this is actually baseline Thomcraft. So I have it in my hand here, and I can just zoop and zoop. It makes a little ender noise. And if I run back to my base, there we are, you will see that I have those pedestals and that marble in my storage system. And that's because this hand mirror links to a new machine in the basement with the spaghetti machine. Yes, and you see that this thing is in use for other things too. This is the magic mirror that the hand mirror is linked to. And, well, it's actually linked to a couple of places. Okay, so first of all, these magic mirrors, just as they are, they operate just like the Essentia mirrors. You bind them to each other, and anything you throw in one end... Oh, I get it. It's, it's because I'm standing too close. Yeah, see? Ends up down there. Now, you can also have the magic mirror linked to it. And that sends it down there. And that chest down there, that just has a ME import bus on its underside. The ME import bus sucks items out of the hungry chest and into my storage network. So, and, and because this area is chunk loaded, anytime I, anytime I use the mirror, it ends up in my storage just fine. So I can send things to storage from anywhere. Now, that's not the only thing. You see down there that the Hungry Chest is receiving a steady stream of HDPE pellets. Because, if the textures will load in, I have, over here, a melding mirror. This is a special thing from Automagy. You see, in Baseline Thomcraft, which these magic mirrors are from, you need... Um, mirrors can only be paired once. You can't have... Well, they can be paired once, and you can have a hand mirror. But that's the most links you can have to a single mirror. But with Autumn Meiji, I can make these melding mirrors that allow me to link multiple mirrors to the same output. And they are actually really, really easy to make. All I need is... I forget what it's called, the Conflux Disk. Yes. This thing was a relatively simple infusion to make the first time. And every time after that, you can just you can just duplicate it with alchemy. Mm-hmm. One turns into two. Other than that, it's just a bunch of really simple ingredients. It's a glass pane, a bit of quicksilver, and three gold nuggets.
you get the mirrored glass, conflux disc, bit of gold, and that's your melding mirror. Really, really simple. Now, it's useless on its own. It needs a crystalline eye. Which, as you know from our um, from the remote comparators, are really easy to make. It's just some census and vitreous on a spider eye. You take your crystalline eye and you go down to the mirror you want to link to. You just a clicky click. See, it's bound to magic mirror. And then you go to where you want to bind this thing. And actually, I think I'm going to hook titanium up to my storage system. So, just going to go right on over here to my titanium drawer. I'm going to cardboard box this, and then I'm going to put it on our storage drawer network and um, increase its size and void it. And I think that the that mirrors can take directly from a hopper. I don't think it can go directly on the hopper, but I think it should be able to. And there we go. Hmm. Oh, I see what's happening. Yeah, it's making those particles because the titanium is going in. In which case, um, yeah, before I before I put the the crate on, I'm going to have to clean it out of the storage network. Actually, let me take that mirror off because it's going to be making more titanium. Yeah, just take that off real quick. The eye stays bound, so nothing's harmed. Okay, take that titanium out. So I can just put this on the storage network there. It doesn't even matter that it's not facing the right way. I can just void it and size it. And there we go. And then when I hook the melding mirror up to our storage network, a boop and a boop, there we go. See, the titanium ingots are ticking up at a fairly good rate. And if we go down into our basement, um, nom, 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 that'll slow down once the hopper is empty. But yeah, so using this system, I can remotely send things to my base without having to run ME cables through or wasting a channel. Not maybe useful for everything, like um, for most machines and stuff, I'm going to be running ME cables into the area anyway, but for things like these HDPE pellets, or for the titanium, where it's running off of a farm with no interface into the ME whatsoever, yeah, it's, it's a pretty useful little intermediary. Now, what was I doing? Ah, yes, I was setting up that ritual, which... Ah, crap. Okay, so to make that ritual work, we are going to need to get into blood alchemy. Specifically, I am going to have to make... Well, actually, I think I have a quest for it. Yeah, bleeds. Oh, I did a question bleeds. Ah, yes. Let's let's talk about the other thing I built. I built a little teleporter nook with some teleposers, and I'm running red crystal down the back, and I have teleports to the bloody temple in the abyssal mausoleum. So when I feel like it, I can go and farm some more reward bags. I won't show that off right now though. So uh, yes. Oh, and I need to make a. Dusk tool. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ah, there it is. I need to make an alchemic chemistry set. Now, this shouldn't be too hard, but what's going to be hard is, uh, well, yeah. You'll see. Okay. And there we go. Alchemic chemistry set built. Very, very simple. 
Now, blood magic alchemy is a little bit interesting. It uses a bit of blood from your network and a bunch of ingredients to either make an item or to infuse onto a potion, which I believe it should be giving me some ingredients for. Yeah, it's some catalysts and stuff like that. Now, blood magic potions are kind of um, customizable. Okay, so to start off, if you were to take just a regular empty bottle and infuse it with a little bit of blood, you get this potion flask with eight swigs in it. And then you can take it into your alchemic chemistry set and you can give it an effect, which it could range from things like regeneration to instant health to uh, all the vanilla potion effects, plus a couple special ones like satiation that fill up your hunger meter, right? Then you need to feed it things like binding agents and lengthening and power catalysts in order to determine how effective that potion is. Because just by itself, it, it basically does nothing. And it gives you the effect for a couple of seconds, kind of like potion petals. But you can make it extremely effective. Like you could have a flask, a flask of satiation that fills up your hunger and satiation from a swig. And you could have potions that give you regeneration too for like 15 minutes. It's pretty powerful. And you can have multiple effects. Although the more effects you stack on, the better the odds of something going disastrously wrong. While this is happening, I think I'll just... No, this is still going. Okay. It's almost done. Anyway, um, well, I'll just take the Master Orb. Yeah. Yes. That isn't something I'm going to be doing in this pack, though. I think I'm pretty good on potions. The main thing I want to use this for is making things like... I don't know. How about let's do Terai. These alchemical basics. These things are kind of like well, they're they're used in higher tier alchemy, and you can also melt them down into sort of a gaseous state, and you can use them to empower rituals. And they are catalysts that we are going to need to summon demons. So, I'm just going to make a ton of this Terai stuff. It's just obsidian, dirt, sand, and this simple catalyst, which I need to make a ton of as well. And a simple catalyst is just redstone, sugar, glowstone, and gunpowder. It's potion ingredients, basically. So actually, I should have made two alchemically, alchemic chemistry sets so I could have two of these going in parallel. And I'm going to need more blood orbs to power them all, of course. Yeah, and there it goes. And see that this is fairly slow. Yeah. So, like I said, I'm going to need to make a couple of these and run them in parallel. I think Master Orbs are high enough tier to do all the alchemy in the game. So they're kind of a good workman orb, especially since weak blood shards are so freaking cheap. Okay, and now I should be able to craft those at will. Yes. I also have lava crystals on autocraft. Very convenient. Always have a spare orb that you keep in your ME system just for purposes like that. Now, these alchemic chemistry sets can actually be sort of automated with a ritual called the Ballad of Alchemy. But it's kind of awkward, and I've never really found it to be all that really easily usable. It can be done. Um... I think in one of Direwolf 20's seasons, he did a really awesome blood magic tower with tons of uh, alchemy just set up on a whole floor of it. It was really immense and really awesome. Anyway, I can take these and arrange them just like so. And crap, I need another master orb. Yeah, these, these master orbs, you... 
you kind of end up using them freaking everywhere. Okay, I place the Master Orb down. Ooh. Yep. Let's get our soul out. Here we go. Isn't he cute? Oh, It thinks it's people. Oh, I could just keep you as a pet. Except you give me this really annoying slowness debuff, so you can just die. And there we go, Demon Blood Shard. And actually, I am going to have to get a couple of these, because these are useful for a bunch of things. They can increase the range of teleposers, but I'm never going to do that. I'm going to need them to make the Awakened Crystal, along with some more essential salts. And that's needed to activate more advanced rituals. It's used for the next tier of Blood Orb, which, yeah, I'm going to want. It's used for a bunch of little things. And more importantly, it can be used to soup up Bound Armor, which I am now going to start working on. So I am essentially going to make a couple... I, I'm going to make a bunch of that Terai Essential Salt, and I'm going to summon a bunch of those demons. And you saw that, really, that's not even a fight. That is just slaughter. And I'm not going to make you watch me farm. So I will talk to you in a minute. Ooh, look at that. That is an Archmage's Blood Orb. Now, if you look over on my little blood network over there, you see I have this thing pretty full. But you see, the thing is, that's full for a master blood orb. If I take this Archmage, bind it to myself, feed it a little bit of blood, yeah! <laughs> All that blood we had is still in there. It's just that the Archmage's blood orb dwarfs the Master Orb in storage capacity by so much that it is only a tiny little sliver. And this is not even the top tier Blood Orb in baseline blood magic. And we have a couple of mods that have ridiculous amounts of blood storage. So, so long as I keep this thing sitting in the altar, like whenever I'm not using it for something else, I will basically have a huge buffer storage of blood. All the blood I can eat. Now, one thing I'm going to use that blood for is, of course, the bound armor that I keep talking about. You see, so long as I have blood in my network, the bound armor will spend LP to take damage instead of me. And with that much blood storage, and a constant influx of it from the witches, yeah, I'm basically going to be invincible. So, to make the blood or to make the downed armor, I have to take these empty sockets, which are made out of diamonds and weak blood shards and glass, and they are going to need to fill up with a ridiculous amount of blood each. Actually, you know what? While the armor's cooking, I promised quest advancement today. Let's do some quest advancement. Now... I can't do anything with blood magic, because that's all tied up at the moment. So... Made of is complete. Next one? Okay, let's do some Batania questing. So, first of all, it wants us to make these incense sticks and incense plates. Incense is kind of an extension of the potion-making system. It's relatively cheap and simple to make the incense stick, as well as the incense plate. That's just more living wood. There we go. Incense stick, incense plate. Is that the quest? No. Because it, you, uh, this on its own is useless. If I put this down, I'm sure it shows up. Nope, I can't even place it. Because this stick needs to be infused 
in the botanical brewery. So, does this, okay. Yeah, that's a green stick, but I'm not seeing a type. So, um, yeah, that looked like upsurging. That's the only one that I see that's green. So, upsurging. That is warp feather and a regular carrot. That's really easy. Yeah, all the ingredients are the same as with potion bottles. It just takes a vastly larger amount of mana. So, we throw down the stick. We throw down the ingredients. And this might even take this a moment. Let's see. Can I beat it by getting... Oh, I almost won the race. Almost. So is that our quest? That's our quest. And it gives us another incense stick. Yeah, that's... And notice, emptiness, 360 minutes. Six hours. Yeah. Jump boost 2, 90 minutes. And the way you use these is you place down your plate, you place down your incense stick, and then you take a flint and steel, and you light it. It kind of lets off little cute particles. And you notice we have jump boost too. We can jump a lot higher. But we only have it for two seconds, because we're dependent on an area around the incense plate, like a beacon effect. It's a pretty good sized area, I think. Let's see. There we go. That is the limit of its range, right here. From all the way downtown over there. Let's see. Yeah. It's a pretty good long range. But I don't know. I don't like it because the range of it is invisible and like, eh. Like, I could have those six hours vanity emptinesses scattered throughout the base, but then I would have to replace them and relight them every six hours. And yeah, I can automate that. But that would mean running wiring all over the base. And really, it's just easier to wear a blood pendant, okay? So let's, let's just get rid of that. Jump boost is annoying anyway. And notice that by digging it up, yeah, I lost all the rest of that stick. So once it's down and lit, you can't move it. Anyway, I think I will just avoid this. And next up, wants me to make a piece of timeless ivy. That's really simple. That's just some vines, a guy spear, and some elementium. Vines can be made out of nature essence. And all the rest we should already have. There we go. Okay. Really simple quest there. Timeless Ivy, like I said, repairs items using mana, and I really don't have a use for it with any of my tools that I have. I guess I'll keep it just in case. I don't know. Okay, then it would want me to make a Gaia Spirit and get in fight, but okay. Why not? Why not? But this guy's really annoying. Ugh. Actually, actually, yeah. There's something I kind of want to try for him. Hold on, give me a moment. I need to do a bit of research real quick. Okay. I think I've got a handle on how this works. So, I am going to try out a Witchery Custom Brew. Specifically, I am going to try out a brew of, uh, on effects level 1, Ender Inhibition. This prevents things from teleporting around. Um, I've been doing a little bit of research, and the way that a custom brew works is, okay, first of all, every effect... Every brew effect has a certain level, and you have to have enough capacity in the first place in order to accommodate all those levels. And all these ingredients are the first thing you toss in, mandrake root and nether wart and all that, 
and they add capacity levels to your potion, and you, you just have to have enough capacity to have the potion effect. Next, you determine the power of the potion, which you just add these ingredients in, and that increases its effect, like it could make the potion regen 1 or regen 2 or regen 5 or whatever, right? Okay, and after that you set the duration with these ingredients, and after that you add in any special modifiers you might want, like um, you could turn a potion of harming into a potion of healing or vice versa and stuff like that. And then you set the dispersal, I'm just going to have this as a regular throwing potion, but there's also like special gaseous potions and you can have the potion flow out as a liquid and there's this weird trigger thing that's for PvP. And finally, you put in the effect. Now, I want Ender Inhibition, which it's not actually telling me how to make it, I think. Is that in a different book? Where does it where does it list out what I need? Anyway, I, I looked that up in the wiki, so it doesn't matter. So here I have capacity. I have the three ingredients for max power. I have two of the ingredients for duration. I don't have the full thing. Then I have dispersal. Then I have the Ender Dew and the Water Artichoke Globe for the effect. And I believe that if I throw them in in that order, I should get a potion. So. Okay, it's sparking up. I'm not sure how long I have to wait. I think... I think it could be done, question mark. Ah, okay, it's emitting different color particles. So, Splash Brew of Ender Inhibition 4. I got it right. It's only gonna last for two minutes though. Anyway, it might not even work, but it's just something I wanted to try. And I think that's the only prep I'm going to do, because honestly, this shouldn't be hard. You know what? I'll grab the Notch Apples, just in case of emergency. Now. So yeah, when I defeat this guy, he will drop these Dice of Fate. And that is his kind of special drop thing, which we'll talk about if and when I get it. So let's just do this. Okay. Hey, you're that other guy's manager, right? Well, let me tell you about him. That guy, he is not a hard worker, you know? You strike me as more of a, more of a reasonable chap. Well, you might notice a couple of problems around here. Would you go away? It's freaking... Ugh, the plebes. The plebeians, right? Ugh. Anyway, my man. So, this world here. It could use a guardian, don't you think? Yeah. I think the previous guy, like... He didn't do a good job. I mean... Go away. Yeah. Although, honestly, you don't seem that tough either. I mean, you're a hell of a lot more no What you... Honestly. You know what it is. You know what it is. These Guardians of Gaia, they disable Blood Shard Pendants. They disable any buff that only lasts for a couple of seconds. So, he turned off my emptiness effect and we're getting all these freaking monsters. <laughs> I forgot about that. I should have done this at daytime. But yeah, so long as I stay out of the pink stuff, I can just heal anything he throws at me. And even if I start to get low, I have those Notch Apples, and that's pretty much an instant full heal.
Now note that all Gaia Guardians have a damage cap on them. And it's a pretty low cap. I think I might be over it. So I couldn't make this fight much faster. I just kind of have to wear him down. It's a good thing I upgraded to Globetrotter, don't you think? <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I forgot to try out the potion. Okay, did that get you? No, it didn't. Damn. It was kind of a it, it was kind of a silly hope anyway. Come on. Oh, that was unfair. Okay. Why not? Yeah, look at that. Hey, you can be proud. You're the first boss to make me eat a notch apple, even if I just kind of did it out of caution. <sighs> yep, we have run through the music. It should loop. But I guess it's not. So we get to deal with whooshy noises. Oh, look at that. Yeah, he's summoning wither skeletons and stuff like that. I'm I'm so scared. Uh-huh. Accomplish with this. You done? Yep, I told you, he's not really any trouble. He's just annoying. Really, really annoying. Okay, let's get rid of all these frickin' bows. Oh, he dropped a blacker lotus. That's nice. I wish he dropped overgrowth seeds. Those are nicer. Oh, and he dropped some high-tier runes and uh, so, much, so much. Oh, he dropped the Pinkinator. That's fun. I think that makes a spawnable version of the Wither that does not aggro. And he dropped Will of Our Rim. Uh, critically hits us by a strong weakness effect. Eh. Okay, that's all of that foolishness taken care of. Now, this Dice of Fate, which first of all, let me make sure the quest, yeah, the quest understood that I have it. This Dice of Fate will randomly give me one of several different artifacts. And these artifacts are actually quite good. They are pretty much the only reason you would want to do this fight. 
And I might actually farm that guy a couple of times just because there's a specific one that I really want. But let's hope we get it. So, doop. Fruit of Grisaya. I think that all that does is it spends a little bit of mana to refill your hunger. Lame. Anyway, note that it is soul bound to me, meaning that no one else can use it. Yeah, that's that's disappointing. That's really disappointing. And disappointing kind of describes everything that's happened with the Guardians of Gaia. Uh, honestly, I, a lot of people kind of seem to have trouble with him. I mean, I, I guess if you're not wearing the right gear. And the Wither effect, yeah. If you don't have anything to deal with Wither, he can be a little bit tough. That's really the source of all of his damage. But... Otherwise, it's... Yeah. And it's still going. Anyway. Did that finish off Batania? I think that finished off Batania. Okay, hold on. These wills are pretty cool. Let me go and look up what they all do, and I'll, I'll pick one. Okay. Each of these wills basically adds an effect when you attack an enemy. I'm picking the Will of Guthon, which will give me, um, which will allow me to absorb some of the damage that I deal. Yes, and uh, notice that all I have left is a couple of green hearts, and then I am done with all that. Anyway, you get these wills onto your helmet by just crafting them to Gezar. Like a uh, so. Now, yep, that's still of revealing, still holds all of its enchants. It just essentially gains another enchant. Yes. And it should look extra cool. Yeah, I have a... I, I have a... It's... It's just a piece of crap stuck to my forehead. That's nice. <sighs> well, Batania's done. The Batania quests are done, anyway. I'm sure I'll still find uses for Batania. I mean, huh. Okay. Oh, yes, I, I made this mail order catalog. It's actually kind of funny. I'll show it to you. It's a really simple craft. Yeah, it's just like paper and glass and stuff. But when you throw it on the ground and give it some space. Kaboom! Turns into the Sanguine Sientum. Which essentially is just a bunch of lore for blood magic. Like, I mean, there's a couple of recipes in there, but... It basically just explains what all the rituals do. In fancy, florid terms. Very well written, but... I think I'd prefer something that was a little bit more, you know, technical. Okay, so... I need the Bloodburn Tome and Delving into Darkness. Okay. Uh, Book and Quill, Glass Shard, and an Orb. Okay. Uh, how do I make Glass Shards? Book and Quill is easy. But how do I make Glass Shards? I don't know. Maybe I have to bloodify glass? That would be my only guess. <sighs> well, I can't do that. So let's look into Delving into Darkness. That's Book and Quill and Ink and Orb. Okay. It is specifically a weak blood orb, apparently. What? Am I out of storage? How am I out of storage? Oh my god, I'm out of storage. Oh yes, note that I upgraded all my cells and the, um, the crafting CPUs to 64k. What? Why aren't you... 
Oh, of course, there's no storage space. So it has nowhere to put it. <laughs> okay, this is freaking annoying. Let's just put it into the 16K real quick. Okay, let's, let's see what's happening there. Already filled up with four types. Oh, I guess it was those crafting recipes that it was still looking for a place to put everything. Okay. Well, I can take care of that. So let's just disconnect from the storage drawers. Take all those out. Okay, that has got all the 64Ks full. And let that be an important lesson to you all. Always keep a empty storage drive on hand. Just in case. And in fact, I think I will just keep that in a chest. Just in case. There we go. Delving into darkness is from Sanguamancy. Sanguamancy is a fun little mod that helps you use blood magic for automation, basically. And this is all lore-rific, I can tell. Okay, well, maybe I'll read that. Okay. Have the sockets cooked yet? No, they haven't. But they are almost there. Oh, shoot. I'm going to need four more after this because I need to make the soul armor forge. I completely forgot about that. Well, uh, that's a good lesson. Always double check that you have enough. That's okay, I can just craft four more sockets. And these will fill up way faster than that first set. Yeah, look at it go. Okay, well, let us start crafting the armor anyway, because this will take a moment. So, first of all, I need to make the Soul Armor Forge. That's the four sockets, an orb, and some smooth stone. Very simple. Now, the way bound armor is crafted is a little bit interesting. See, what you do is you take the sockets and you fill out the pattern of armor that you want, just like a crafting table, except in block form. And then you put the soul armor forge on it to fill out the grid. Now, this alone will actually, if I use my activation crystal on it, it will get me a set of armor and it will be diamond level armor that will protect me. But I can add additional effects onto it. In fact, um, by default, if I add a weak blood shard, I can add one effect, but if I add a demon blood shard, I can add two effects to it. And you just put the shard right in one of the sockets. Each of these sockets can hold one item. Now, the more effects I add to it, the more LP it will cost per tick. You can offset the cost by using a blood orb. And if you put in a master or higher level blood orb, any effect you add will be free. So, what all effects do I want? First up, I'm putting in a void sigil. This blood magic tool, just as a sigil, if you use it, it will delete a liquid, any liquid. So you can use it to quickly clean up areas. But when you put it into bound armor, 
Its special effect is it will prevent void damage. Yeah, that damage that you get when you fall beneath the world, gone. Next up, I am going to want, yes, a lava sigil. Like the name might imply, oh, it keeps the lava crystal, that's nice. Anyway, like the name may imply, if you use this, it spends a little bit of blood in order to make a little bit of lava, which here instantly turned to obsidian. But when you put it into bound armor, it blocks all fire damage and allows you to even swim through lava. Boop. So I have my two effects. I have demon blood shard. I have master blood orb. All I need to do is right click the soul armor forge. And the first piece of my bound armor is complete. Yes. See all those items in slots on it? Very, very nice. And if I put it on, oh, oh, this is going to be fancy. Mm hmm. So next up, we have. Bound leggings. Got my demon blood shard, and I need to make a bunch more master orbs. That's kind of the mantra of this episode. I need to make more master orbs. Just because rituals are always fun to watch. Zoom. Kaboom! I swear that happens like half the time. I'm gonna be right here on the spinny. There we go. There we go. Yes. As you can see, I have assembled a bunch of ingredients, including that lovely sanguine helmet we just bound. So. That away. So we have our orb for our pants. No comment. We have Sigil of the Whirlwind. When you turn this thing on, any projectiles fired at you will bounce off, sometimes back at your enemies. It constantly sucks up blood, but the same effect can be applied to our armor, and because of the Master Blood Orb, it will not cost us. Next we have a water sigil. You use this thing, you spend a little bit of blood to make water. But when put onto armor, it gives you water breathing. I'm breathing through my pants, don't think about it too hard. Zoop! Yes. Okay, next let's do the boots. Doop doop. Doop doop. Demon Blood Shard, Orb, Sigil of Haste. Use it and you gain a little bit of speed. I think it also gives you Step Assist. It's about the same speed as sprinting. Same effect in the boots. Sigil of Air. You might remember this thing. Zoom. When applied to our boots, prevents all fall damage. I said, where's the free slot? I said prevents all fall damage. Zoop. Oh. 
Okay, this this is kind of starting to look cool. I, I actually like the Terra Steel helmet with this. But it must be replaced because we only get that invulnerability effect when wearing the full set. So, the Bound Helmet. Demon Blood Shard. Or... This Sanguine Helmet is actually a bit of a special thing. It does not take up one of our two effects, but it adds the effects of Goggles of Revealing. Blood Lamp. This thing is a pretty cool tool, actually. If you use it, it shoots off a little projectile that makes a torch. I'm not really using it because my I don't think it works with the Glowstone Nook trick. Anyway, on the helmet, it will give us Night Vision. Divination Sigil, you've seen this before. This will allow us to see our blood network at all times. Kind of the HUD upgrade. Oh. Ooh. I'm like a demon samurai. Yeah. I like the look of it all, but I don't like how the helmet completely hides your head. But there is potentially a way around that in this pack. Oh, yes, and let me go and... Oh, look how fast that is. Let's see. I wonder if I take off my globe trotters. Yeah. It's about as fast as the globe trotters, and I still have step assist. That's what I was wondering. Okay. So since it's about as fast as the Globe Trotters, and I still have Step Assist, I might make instead of um, instead of having ludicrous speed with both this and the Globe Trotters, I might make a uh, a tectonic girdle. It's very simple, just so that I remain immune to knockback. Yeah, I just have the runes in my system. Do I see the belt? Let's see, if I take... No, the belt's not visible, the armor's too big. I think if I weren't wearing the armor though, I'd be able to see the belt. Yeah, see it on, on me there. Oh well, anyway. And yes, I made a nice, whoa, that's weird. But I, I made a home for our Terra Steel armor just in case we ever need a backup set. Okay. There it is. Oh yes, that's that's something to note. There is actually a search bar up here. Anyway, yeah, I was looking for armor disguise. So, what you do is you simply take the armor that you want to hide and you take the armor it wants to look like, and you apply some other things, and you apply some Essentia, and the armor will keep all of its stats and functions, but it will gain the appearance of the armor that you disguise it as. So essentially I have myself a uh, social slot here. And also I believe that... Uh, da, da, da. Yes, if I use an invisibility potion, I can make the piece of armor invisible altogether, which I think is what I am going to do. Oh yeah, um, just a little aside, I found out that if you take a mana lens and you put a mana pearl on it, it becomes a rainbow lens that cycles through these colors. It has no other effect, but it looks so pretty. I like it. Total in neg negative 20? What? What? Okay, this this could be bad. Um, I have never seen a negative instability rating before. That's I'm a little bit afraid. Okay, okay. It um. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Wait, how come I cannot see my blood network? Wait, could I see my blood network before? I have to check the footage, but I could have sworn I could see the blood... 
Well, I still have night vision, so its effect must be good. Yeah, if I take it off, it starts to tick down. I put it on. Huh. Maybe something was screwy. Anyway. So, magic invisible helmet. I look a bit better with it. I don't know. If I find anything that's really cool to wear, it's also possible to pop the effect off of the helmet and then replace it with something else. So, today got a little bit distracted by blood magic, but I did do some questing, like I promised. And I am now freaky, freaky invincible. In fact, let me go and run and like find a magma pool or something. Yeah. I can swim in lava, no problem. Actually, I think that might be the Infernal Wand. Let's try Dumpy Dumpy. Nope, that's just my armor. So I can swim in lava, I'm immune to void damage. I, I think I am pretty much invincible. Like, I'm just gonna run for this creeper. Hello. Oh wow, he actually did damage me a little bit. He damaged me by a half a heart. Maybe that was some interaction with the runic enchantment. Because I think I should actually be immune to all damage. So that was a little bit weird. Anyway, yeah. I am, I am freaky strong now. So, next time on Regrowth... We will be doing a little bit of proper automation, I think, because that is one thing I said I would do today that I didn't. So I will see you then.